going to revisit our friend, the Atwood machine, where you've got, a, of course, a frictionless, massless pulley uh, attached to the ceiling with a very, very lightweight, virtually massless rope. Um, and two masses are going to be attached. We'll call this mass two and this mass one. Okay. This rope will not stretch. It has no mass. I got it out of my uh, physics closet back there. Now, the deal is this. Uh, if mass two is bigger than mass one, then if I were holding mass two, perhaps over here, and mass one were just sitting on the, uh, the edge of this chalkboard being held, uh, everything's at rest. I let go of M2. If M2 is seriously bigger or more massive than M1, then the system will move this way. Now the string doesn't stretch, so there's, um, they'll move at the same rate. If the dif difference in height initially is something we call H, uh, maybe the problem says, hey, how fast will these masses be going when they pass each other? In other words, after they've moved H over 2 down and H over 2 up, what speed will they have? That'll be one question. Another question is uh, when this one hits the ground, uh, this one will be up here now, and how fast will it be going at H, say? Now, um, this one's sitting down, no longer in the picture. There's no tension anymore in the rope, but this one will now have some initial speed that will make it go a certain bit of height higher before it comes to rest and then falls back down to the ground, and then we don't care about the problem, it gets complicated. Um, but how much higher will it go? I will call that I will use a pen that works, and I will call that uh, additional height h prime. And we're going to look for all three of these. We're going to look the, for the speed when the two masses um, pass each other, the speed of the masses just as m2 hits the floor, and then the, uh, the extra height that M1 is carried up into the air. Again, the system will accelerate in this direction, in the, uh, the counterclockwise direction. Now, we could use um, forces and balance forces and get tensions and accelerations and do our kinematics approach like we've done before. Or we could just do energy, what a simple thing. Let's just say the, right here, at the base of M1, when it's sitting on this little chalkboard tray. We're going to call that the reference of potential energy being zero. I'm going to call this point in time uh, energy initial. The energy initial is going to be all tied up in the potential energy of mass two being H above the reference. So mass two G H is all about the energy in this system. Now, after the, this one has fallen down, h over 2 distance, this one's moved up, h over 2, this one will now have some potential energy. This one will have less potential energy, and they will both have kinetic energy. Now balancing uh, or energy conservation will allow me to solve for the speed that each of the objects have. Because the rope doesn't stretch, they'll both go the same speed. M2 will have less potential energy. M1 will now have potential energy. And both blocks will be moving at a rate of what we want to know, um, V. I'll call it V um, with a subscript H over 2. So if you simply plug in all your numbers, and first fault, solve for uh, V of H2, then plug all your numbers in, you'll 
get started with the first question, answering the first question. Now, when M1 moves an additional H over 2, in other words, it moves up to the height of M, I'm sorry, M1 moves up to the height of M2. When M2 reaches uh, zero potential energy, what is going to be the speeds of the objects right at that moment in time? Well, this will have, we can again do conservation of energy. Only now, all the potential energy is tied up in M1. Um, they'll both have kinetic energy with speed of, I'll call it V sub H. Um, now, this guy's going to have potential energy, but remember, he has less mass than she does. So he will have less potential energy than she initially had, and that excess energy can then be converted to kinetic. Yay. Fine. So this gave us the velocity when they crossed one another's path. This idea gives us the speeds they have just as M2 is hitting the ground, and M1 now, left to its own devices, will not stop. Newton's first law says, oh no. However, it won't just keep going in a straight line straight up at a constant rate because, hey, gravity is slowing it down. Just how high will it get? Well, we could use one of our favorite equations. Yay. I mean, you could actually use energy at this point, but what can I say? I, uh, I'm so torn and tied to the kinematic world. Uh, when it gets to h prime above this level h, the speed at that moment will be zero. The initial speed here is the speed we just calculated. So what do we get for the height? Well, we get um, vh squared over 2g. And hey, g is a negative number, so uh, if, if it is, in fact, if up is positive and down is negative, then this will be a positive value. And g is a negative value, so everything works out. You could simply um, calculate with energy. It, it, it'll give you the same answer. The initial uh, energy in the system equals the energy at any time. So why not, while M2 is just sitting here doing absolutely nothing, having no energy, and M1 is way up here, H prime plus H above the ground, then all this energy will equal M1 G H plus the unknown H prime that you're looking for. So, ah, you know what, maybe that is easier. You get the same answer, you do the algebra, you do the math, and convince yourself that it works. 